the data-centric army. This is data literacy. During our time together, I will highlight the importance of things such as data literacy, its application in military operations, the challenges we face with implementation, how the Army can foster a data-driven Army, and what the Signal School has begun to build in enabling a data-driven force. I will also highlight how data literacy can enhance decision-making and operationalize efficiencies to allow leaders to make decisions at the speed of relevance and to enhance real-time battlefield awareness. This is going to be our agenda. I'll let you look it over real quick. Good morning. I am Captain Derek Kozlowski. I am the Chief Data Officer of the Signal School. I've been in the Army as of today, 16 years. Um, I have a very blessed and unique path where I've actually been an 11 Bravo, a 25 Bravo, a 255 Alpha, and now a 26 Bravo. Um, a lot of people ask me, what does a captain know about data? Um, so holistically, I wanted to inform you that I have been working in a data-centric environment over the last four years where I've led a team of data analytics um, for the 160th Special Operation Airborne, where I was doing preventive and predictive maintenance on helicopters where we are providing real-time ana battlefield analysis commanders to make data-driven decisions. But this is why you're here. Why, why a data-centric army? Why is, this the, uh, why is this week about data-centricity? Secretary of the Army said, my second objective is to ensure the Army becomes a more data-centric and can conduct operations in a contested environment, which will enable our ability to prevail on the future battlefield. So when we think about that and why that's important to us, right, and everything we're doing in the Signal Corps and across the Army, without data literacy, we can't do any of that. So to get to data centric, the first building block on that is data literacy. Also highlighted on here is the CAC is CAC's guidance. At, by FY by June of FY24, there will be data literacy baked into all PME. Um, so when you think about that holistically and how fast that's going, that should let you know how important data literacy is to the Army. Um, and, and so there's some other big and very important quotes on here, um, but. But really, we are trying to enable and get to a true data-centric environment and lead to, and that only comes through data literacy and, and the empowerment of data. So first, we're going to start by defining what data literacy is. Data literacy is the ability to read, work with, analyze, and communicate with data enable, in order to describe, diagnose, predict, and prescribe. Um, so when you think about that, right, Dr. Markowitz, um, had a very important quote that I put down there at the bottom, right? Every individual is part, oops, sorry, part of the Army's data workforce. So when we think about that and you look in that bottom right corner um, and the, the 11 data personas that was put, on, put out by HRC, everybody plays a role in, in data centricity and, and, and becoming data literate. And as you see that bottom right corner, that red circle, that's how we truly enable not only soldiers but commanders to drive towards data literacy. Um, and, and so just to kind of highlight that definition right there, right, ability to read, work with, analyze, and communicate with data, that was, uh, came from Mr. Jordan Morrow um, and, and the book Be Data Literate. Uh, the Army has officially adopted that term, and that is the official term of data literacy across the Army. Um, so when you think about that in the perspective, right, Mr. Morrow has done a, a tremendous job of empowering and enabling the DOD. He does it all on his free dime. He travels all over the United States. Um, he was at Fort Liberty last week um, talking with 18th Airborne Corps. Um, and so he was a part of the team that actually helped build the Data Literacy 101 course that West Point put on that really started Data Literacy across the Army. Next, we're going to really define what read, work with, analyze, and communicate with data is, right? So when you read data, there's different types of data, right? You have structured, unstructured, categorical, numerical, and special. Um, within these, they all have their own special challenges on the back end, as our 255 alphas know, you know, uh, within different databases and how they are utilized. From there, you go to working with data, and this is the ability to ask the data a question, right? So at, when you're working with data, you know what data you have, so then you can drive a question through data. From there, you analyze data, and that's the ability to take data solutions and use it to make decisions. And there's different types of analytics, which I'll highlight uh, w shortly. And then from there, you communicate with data. And this is the ability to tell a story, right? A data-driven story that is analyzed through the information that you got from reading, working with, 
and then analyzing the data. Next, we're going to highlight the four types of analytics and why they're important to us holistically across the Army. So you got your descriptive, which is, you know, that is what is going on now. Um, so when, whenever I give these talks or when I brief uh, at the higher levels, I ensure that we talk about truly how do, what is a descript, descriptive analytics, right? So it, if you're going to the doctor and he says you're sick, that, that's descriptive analytics. He's not giving you any details, though. And, and that's where we have to start, though. We have to know what we have and what we're doing so that we can drive to the other three stages of analytics. Next is your diagnostic. And this is why is this phenomenon happening? So from the doctor perspective, that means, hey, you have the flu. So now you know what the, what the issue is, and that's where we can really drive. And that's where the Army needs to really dig deep, and this is what we're starting to get into, not only at the Signal Schoolhouse, but holistically across the Army, is getting after diagnostic analytics. From there, you go to the predictive analytics. So this is what's going to happen, happen next, right? Um, and, and from the doctor perspective, it's, hey, you have the flu, and you're going to be sick for the next five to seven days um, when you think about that holistically. And then you get the prescriptive. Hey, you have the flu. Here's medicine that's going to make you feel better. And that's, that's really the in-state goal. And, and I was just talking to Chief Westbrook right before this, and, and it's a, it's a far-fetched goal, right? And very few industry companies have perfected prescriptive analytics. So we got to continue to drive these first three so that we can long-term get after uh, pre prescriptive analytics. Um, so I, I highlighted this in red for a very important reason. If, if you leave here with nothing, I ask you to at least take this with you, right? Um, specific, measurable, action-oriented, relevant, and time-bound. These are the type of data-driven questions we need to be asking, not only as soldiers, but leaders down, right? These are all data-driven questions that you can truly use data to get to, a, to an answer. Um, so I actually, um, when I was writing my notes, I, as I was writing them, um, I got an email from Colonel Howard, and he was talking about the Army 10 miler. And so the, I decided to make my question about the Army 10 miler as well. So specific, I'd like to run a 70-minute 10 miler at the Army 10 miler this October. Measurable, using Strava and the pre-built 10 mile training guide, can I, by tracking my mileage and increasing my, my splits, can I get to a seven-minute seven, seven mile? Attainable, I've already run a half marathon this year at a 7.30 pace. So I have a solid base run. So can I get from 7.30 to 7 in, in 56 days? Um, relevant, um, I value my health and my wellness and the fitness goals to help me sustain that. So ensuring that you're applying that true plan to get to where you want to go. Time bound. I have 54 days as of today to meet my goal. Um, and so from that, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time bound, can I achieve a time of 70 minutes or less in the Army 10 miler on October 8th by consistently training every day and accurately tracking my performance and progress? Um, so based off that question, I can utilize the data within Strava to tell me yes or no if I'm going to get to my goal. So again, truly driving that SMART method uh, and the methodology and the way that we think going forward is very, very, very important. And I, I really ask you, again, if you take nothing, please take the SMART method and start driving these questions as you move forward in, in your organizations. What is, a dat what is data storytelling? Um, so I get a question, you know, what should I know about my data? What does data mean? Um, and, and how do you utilize data? You want to make sure your data is accurate, complete, consistent, unique, and timely. Um, and, and within that, right, there are three major portions within data visualization that drives this, right, within storytelling. And that's your narrative, your data, and your visuals. Um, if you look at that middle block up there, that truly tells the story of how they interlink together. You know, data is the foundation of the story. Narrative connects the insight. And visuals simplify and explain the situation. Like to say, pictures are worth a thousand words, and it's truly and if you didn't know, that's unstructured data picture. Um, so holistically, right, when do, when do I use data to tell a story? It, it can be when you agree or disagree on something. Conventional versus disruptive. Expected versus unexpected. Simple versus complex. Safe versus risky. 
These are all things you can use to truly tell a story and see where it lies. And, and that really drives through analytics, right? Is it worth investing? What's the ROI? How do I utilize this to make my organization better? How do I drive after data-driven simplicity, empowering my commander to make decisions at real time through data? And these are the types of things that we can do to empower him. So next, I'm going to kind of shift. So that was data literacy holistically. Now we're going to talk about data literacy in the Army and, and how it plays a role. So the importance of data literacy, as you see on the right, these two visualizations, right? As a commander, you want to be able to see and manage your troops at all times, understanding the power of real-world data, utilizing data-driven decision-making to have the most data at your hands. Um, so with, within enhanced decision-making, right, we want to improve data analytics, um, and, and within that, right, get after, again, going from that prescriptive, descriptive into more of that predictive, and, and that's really where the Army can thrive, um, not only within holistically, but within logistics, within network bandwidth utilization, within ITN usage, bottlenecks. Um, so these are truly things that we can use within enhanced and improving data analytics. Um, supportive of predictive models, right? Ensuring that we're using models that are going to predict and project what our commanders want to see so we can empower them. Um, and, and truly, commanders use more data They've had, they have more data now at their hands than they ever have before. So ensuring that they're not scared of that data, that data, it's our job to empower them to use that data properly so that they can make real-time decisions that affect day-to-day -day operations. Um, identify trends and predict outcomes with greater precision, precision, leading to a better informed strategic and tactical decisions. Um, this, is, this is holistically truly important when it comes to enhanced decision making. So within operational efficiency, Data literacy empowers leaders at all levels to make informed, educated decisions, right? Not only, so when we talk about that, um, so, some real-life operational experiences, right, is maintenance downtimes, getting after ensuring that we're driving down maintenance times so you get those vehicles out. Not only vehicles, on the signal side, your SDNs, your SNNs, right? Ensuring that we're doing the proper maintenance, but we can predict and project when that's going to be done if we use the right analytics and the right data to tell that story that story, um, supply chain. I, I know we've had a huge issue across the Army and supply chain over the last few weeks, few months, and, and really the last year. Um, and, and for us, holistically, computer chips, right? So we can start predicting and projecting when we need them, where we need them, and how we need them, so we can have the right data and the right tools at the right time to solve the right problems. Intelligence analysis. We can use this to get after enemy patterns real-time threat assessments. Um, so understanding intelligence reports, sensor data, and other sources of inf information can lead to early detection and threats of proactive approaches and security. Critical thinking and problem solving. Um, I know this is a, a big thing, right? We have MDMP, but again, true, if you're going to use a data-driven approach, truly applying that smart method to get after questions that data can solve. You know, we, if we don't ask the right questions, the data won't ever be able to solve the question. No matter how much data, you can have all the right data, all the clean data, but if we don't ask it the right question, we're never going to get the right answer that we're looking for, and more importantly, that our bosses are looking for so that we can make those decisions. So next, we're going to talk about challenges to data literacy, right? Um, so culture shift. Um, I read a survey um, last week that said within a culture shift, right, Holistically, CEOs believe data literacy to be important. 87% of CEOs feel like data literacy is very important to them. Only 11% of their employees feel like they're data literate. So when you talk about culture shifts, here in the Army, right, going, getting away from because I told you so and truly driving decisions through data to empower commanders to use their expertise and their experience with the data allows them to make truly seamless decisions at real time which has never been done before. Um, so getting away from the fear of the unknown or data's bad or, you know, AI is going to come and, and, and Arnold Schwarzenegger is going to show up as a robot, right? Getting away from that perspective and truly showing the good of data and empowering leaders to use data to get after decision making. By, priori by prioritizing data-driven strategies, we can lay the foundation for a truly data-centric army. Leaders must ensure they are lying back to their soldiers how data is used to drive their organizations. 
Um, so another big key takeaway, and so this was one of the, the highlights that I got when I did my pre-brief, is ensuring that commanders are also passing that data down, right? It's, it's great for us to empower our commanders to make decisions, but now that commanders are making decisions faster at real time, those, those decisions need to come down to the subordinate leaders as well so they have more time to plan because they don't have all the tools that, that these commanders are going to have at, at echelon at, as we move everything up to the division. So ensuring those brigade and battalion commanders have a little bit more time to plan and ensure that they're ready to, to meet the commander's intent utilizing the tools and the data that they do have. Training and education. Um, I would say we probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for West Point, Colonel Clark, um, and building the Data Literacy 101 course. It was truly a foundational experience, not only for the Army, um, through what Secretary of the Army Warmy said um, on February 8th of 2022, um, truly to get after data literacy, not, not, not just in the Signal Corps, but holistically and driving through um, what, what CAC has implemented, again, like we highlighted before, ensuring that data literacy will be baked into not only to the Signal Corps, not only to cyber, but to the entire Army, empowering everybody to become data literate so that we can become enablers and, and, and work within that persona chart to truly get after data centricity. Um, within that training and education, um, there's also a few key players that have been doing a phenomenal job across the Army when it comes to getting after data literacy and empowering soldiers and leaders to become more data centric. Um, to highlight a few of those, you got 18th Airborne Corps, West Point, Special Operations, HRC, and, and the Signal Schoolhouse um, it has truly driven the way and the path forward to continue to empower and enable decision making through training and continue to upskill and empower soldiers to be successful through data. Next, we're going to talk about data security. Um, and data literacy plays a, a key role in this, right? Def defending against cyber threats and protecting our data. Understanding data is its power, helping to identify vulnerabilities, intrusions, and proactively developing strategies to provide and protect our digital footprint. So the, the power of data, we can start doing predictive analy analytics and analysis to understand what, what the enemy is going to do next so we know what to block, how to block it, to continue to enable and empower, and empower our 25 Deltas and our 255 Sierras to be those true cyber defenders, allow them to protect and enable our network um, so we can continue to do the jobs that, are, that we're here to do. Um, time and resources. This is a big one that, that you, as we go out and talk, um, I, most leaders are very uh, overabundant when it comes to day-to-day -day operations, and, and so this is, they see this as just another training. Um, and, and guess what? We're not alone, um, as you can see here, right? Industry, only 11%, uh, or I'm sorry, w when you look at industry, right, they're only 46% of CEOs that say they know how to train and educate their, their workforce when it comes to literacy. Um, so we still have a lot to do, and I think the Army's on the right, and this could be one of those few things that we're actually ahead of industry on holistically and long term as we get after um, empowering and educating through training and education. Um, but, you know, a challenge is truly enabling commanders to understand that it's not just an extra training or an extra task. It can actually help by optimizing and automating tasks, utilizing data, ultimately freeing up more time for, for critical training activities that enhance unit readiness. So ensuring that commanders realize and understand how important that is and, and what that can truly drive to them um, is very important holistically um, when it comes to training of resources, right? So also, you know, not only, I'm gonna highlight it in the next few slides, right? What the Signal School is doing, but there's a lot of other resources out there when it comes to training and education. Um, the University of South Carolina, University of Hawaii, Ohana, um, MIT, Harvard, they're putting on all these free trainings for soldiers. Um, so utilizing the, the, the resources that are out there, um, but more so getting away from this becoming a challenge and more becoming an enabler. Uh, and, and so that, that would be my biggest takeaway on that one is truly empowering commanders to understand that this is only gonna make their jobs better and their soldiers' jobs better as we utilize data to get away from the holistically preparing slides for five days when I can automate those slides using live data and dashboards. Um, and, and just to kind of highlight, when I was at 160th, the, the, the commander's arc uh, quarterly 
we didn't do PowerPoint slides. It was all live data where there was no manipulation. There was no checking boxes from red to green. It was truly, hey, this is what your organization looked like, and this was the answers you needed to provide to the boss to ensure that he understands where you are if you're red, amber, and green, and empowering that, not, not only just on the maintenance side, right, but manning, personnel, not personnel, money. Hey, we've flown this many flight hours, and this is how I, I plan to get after. If I'm behind, this is what we're going to do to excel. If I'm ahead, this is what we're going to do to sustain so the commander can have a full understanding through live data. So next we're going to talk about foster, fostering a data-driven army. And it all starts with leadership buy-in. Um, it's got to be from the top down. As, as you see, the Army has made this a very big priority, um, not only from the CAT commander, but from the secretary. Um, so understanding that we need to empower and educate soldiers and buy-in as leaders to continue to empower them, send them, um, send them to the training that they need to, to make your unit successful. They may be gone short term, but long term it's going to play dividends for the organization. Data literacy, holistically empowering and educating soldiers to be data literate, right? It, we can't get after any of these other initiatives, analytics, ML, AI, until we have a data literate workforce that people understand and can manage and maneuver data to get after um, data driven decision making. Upskilling soldiers, uh, I'm going to highlight two resources we have here. Um, going on in the signal school, and, and I've kind of shared a few other upskilling options, but again, ensuring these soldiers are trained properly and getting the right training. Um, knowledge sharing. Uh, I was speaking um, yesterday when I was walking around here to get my badge. I, nobody truly knows what everybody else is doing. Take the time to share what your organizations are doing when it comes to data, ML, AI. A, so we're not duplicating efforts, but also when it comes to RMF and, and to you know, getting things accredited, we're sharing those lessons learned, those knowledges, so that everybody can be successful. Um, and, and so, again, like I said earlier, smart questions to your data. Smart, smart, smart. Continue to drive smart holistically all across the workforce, not only in the Army, but um, industry-wide. And, and so I have a, a quote from the, the data-driven con op that I pulled that I think is important. Leadership throughout all Army echelons must possess a fundamental understanding of data, data science, and data literacy to contribute to making the Army agile, resilient, and capable of making future competition successfully. And again, that, that was released last month. So now I'm going to kind of shift gears, right? So this is what data literacy is. This is how it can be used across the Army. Now we're going to talk about data education initiatives and what the signals and what the signal school is doing to empower data literacy and data education holistically across the Signal Corps. Um, so as you can see on the slide, I wanted to walk around, but they said I got to stay at the podium because they're recording me. Um, but, but we have two main efforts, right? So from the ATARS perspective, and that's Data Engineering fun Functional Course and the Data for Leaders Competency Course. So that first one is a two-week, 80-hour technical course, um, truly meant and mandated and meant for our 26 Bravos and 255 Alphas as they take on the data roles, right? Um, and so within this course, uh, we, we just ran it at the end of July and got a lot of great lessons learned, a lot of um, feedback so we can continue to make the course better. Uh, and, and that was truly the goal. We brought in 13 soldiers from across the Army. Um, we said, hey, and we took them all with different da data backgrounds and different unit perspectives on what data is and how they're utilizing data, right? So within this engineering course in the punk, we had people from 4th ID, from Software Factory, from um, AI2C. We had somebody from 1st Armor Division. We had somebody from USASOC from 112th. Um, uh, so very wide and, and broad uh, spectrum. We had 255 Alphas, 255 Novembers, 26 Bravos, 25 Alpha, um, 25 Delta, which is a very unique perspective. Um, and, and again, the goal was to drive and understand what, what data means to each organization and each person individually um, so that we can truly make this course better. And, and again, what makes this special and unique is this is going to be an ATAR. These two courses are going to be issued in ATARs from FY24 to 27. 
Uh, and so what that means to us is we have more flexibility to ensure we're getting your soldiers trained the right way and have the right tools and, and policy in place to ensure that they're getting and meeting what the intent of not only the signal school and the signal corps, but what your unit is expecting of them when they come back. Um, so that's kind of the engineering course. The leader's competency course is gonna be a one week, um, holistically more upper level course for leaders, right? It's gonna be your senior NCOs, it's gonna be your 25 alphas and your non-data technical MOS, so your 255 Sierras and your 255 Novembers. Um, this is gonna be more, like I said, a higher level baseline, hey, this, so they understand and can utilize those 226 Bravos and those 255 Alphas correctly, understand what they're doing, how they're doing it. Um, and we see this more of a front end perspective, right? Uh, the 25 Alpha and the senior NCO, those are gonna be the guys that are in front of the boss, right? So ensuring that we're empowering them and we're getting from data to data centric, driving that pipeline from the 26 Bravos and the 255 Alphas to feed that 25 Alpha and that, and that senior NCO so they can go to the boss with a visualization um, creating that, you know, that pipeline and that connection to allow uh, their commanders to see the story that, that they're trying to tell. Um, I'll also highlight uh, the PME courses and what we're planning in our effects um, going forward. We do have two contracts um, up for bid that we're, that we're uh, g that's going to go, I'm sorry, that's going to empower and educate all signal MLSs. Um, and and uh, I added some kind of TLOs on there so you can kind of see what, what the plan is and how they're gonna learn and when it will be implemented. Um, next slide. So this is the data engineering fundamentals course. This was the trial version. So this was the one we ran two weeks ago. This was what our week one and week two looked like. Um, as you see on the left, it was 32 hours of data plus, 24 hours of intro to Python, uh, 16 hours of programming with Python, and eight hours of big science, big, big data holistically, right? Um, so we, we kind of had to throw this together quickly, but we wanted to ensure, A, we, we educated and empowered the 13 soldiers that came, but more so we wanted to build a baseline to go forward. We said, hey, even if we get this half right, we're still half right, and we can continue to build and grow from it and continue to pr project and prospect the right education at the right time for those MOSs. So um, I'll let you guys read this for, for about 20 seconds. These are, these are some of the observations and comments and key takeaways that we got from the AAR and the lessons learned from those, those soldiers. Um, two big key takeaways that I, that I took away, right? A, we need to ensure that we have some kind of um, pre, prequels, right? Uh, um, Power BI, um, even though it's used and it's holistically being uh, projected across the Army, a lot of soldiers didn't have a, a good understanding of Power BI or any of the power apps that are available to them. So start, start, start early, start often, right? Um, have them come with a Power BI slash Excel background because those are the true tools that are available for them now so that they can drive analytics, but on the front end, um, but more so so we can create pipelines and continue to empower and educate these soldiers um, through some things. Another big thing, um, they didn't, because they're technicians, they want more hands-on keyboard, right? So they asked for a two to one uh, PE versus lecture. And, and if it is lecture, actually have them lecturing them through the PE um, so that they can continue to be technicians and not just be subject matter experts. And that's really what they wanna be. Um, and, and, and another interesting one is, where, where does the engineer leave off and the ORSA pick up? And so continue to build that relationship with the ORSA communities to ensure that the engineers are doing the engineering, you know, the, and so that um, the ORSA can truly build those AI ML models for the boss. So based off their feedback, this is what the next course is gonna look like. Um, as you can see, uh, we did drive some of the changes and lessons learned um, it's it's going to be way more focused on e ETLs, data pipelines, um, and APIs. At, you know, depending on whether you're going to be operating in the cloud or on prem, and and more so highlighting some of that um, zero trust and cloud platform, so that they understand how to be an engineer in both, as they're very different. Um, one of the limitations uh, and other big AERs was 80 hours isn't enough to be to be proficient, and we understand this, but um, we want to start empowering and educating 
signal soldiers as quick as possible and giving them a baseline so they know what tools they have available for them so they know how to connect to authoritative data sources and they can continue to build on their baseline from there. Continue to show these soldiers what, what, what is right and what is available for them. But more so talking and then at the end, right, tying in data governance in practice. So not only, hey, this is what we have available, these are the ethics behind it and, and these are the roles and responsibilities of an engineer, but then getting that governance and truly driving it through how we're gonna man be mandated through the DOD. So this is the, what we think the Data Leaders for Competency course is gonna look like in January. So this course will be offered for the first time in January of 24. And again, we're looking at senior NCOs, 25 alphas, 255 novembers, um, GSs, and um, 255 Sierras. And so this again is gonna be more of that high level literacy, governance, foundations, understanding the power of data, and then more on the front end analytical side. So engineer builds the pipeline, take goes from data to dat, data driven decision making. 25 Alpha picks it up at the other side of the of the pipeline. You know, I kind of like to explain it as a two way highway. They pick that up and then they drive it forward through visualizations and analytics to provide a solution to the boss. Um, and then you look on the on the left. This is kind of the breakdown. You're going to have eight hours of data literacy, three hours of of foundations, five hours of understanding the power of data, 12 hours of analytics and visualization, four hours of zero trust, and eight hours of operational usage. Um, so with that operational usage, that, that's connecting to Army Vantage and actually building a dashboard that allows commanders to make decisions. So they, they come with the problem, hey, my unit wants to do this or see this, and, and so they create um, a tool that, that connects them from their, their workspace into Army Vantage and provides a dashboard when they leave. Um, so again, they actually have a tool that when they get back to their units, they can be successful. So the first course that's gonna get a huge uplift is the 26 Bravo course. And this is actually gonna start next year. Um, and so they're gonna get 300 hours of graduate level education in data, zero trust, and cloud. And this is one of the biggest movements on, on emerging technology that Signal School has ever brought forward. So when you think about that perspective and from that high level of the educational process, um, you can see the breakdowns on the left side of the screen, right? They're, they're not only gonna get Python, but they're also gonna get advanced Python. You know, at the Signal School, we do realize that programming language and scripting is gonna be vital in the future. Um, and so utilizing, getting away from a lot of the low code, no code to an actual scripting and programming solution is very vital and important to ensuring the success of these soldiers as they truly become, you know, be, get put into a data team or da, you know something like the data warfare company or go to the software factory or be utilized as a data team tied in with their ORSAs um, and their other data expert and their analysts. Um, so this is very important to us. Um, a big uplift when it comes to pipelines and ETLs, um, they're gonna get a huge educational upfront from that. Um, and, and another big one, zero trust, right? We wanna ensure that not only are they building these things, but it's secure holistically. I know this is more of a concept now, but getting after the, you know, we see it as seven pillars versus five, and, and I'll highlight that in the other course MLSs. Um, and then tying in some of that big data, that Hadoop and the Spark from Apache um, to ensure they understand big data and building those. And so they already have that baseline within the database uh, curriculum and now driving it to a data-centric curriculum. So this is our, our ETIP contract. This is gonna, be used to affect and empower all the other signal MOSs. Um, uh, so this is a very high level. I'm gonna break it down by signal MOS, um, but just wanna show you the power of this contract and what we're truly trying to get after um, in cloud data, databases, zero trust, programming. Um, um, and so this course, this will probably start taking phase what we're projecting at the end of FY24, early 25. And so this is what the, what the, based off that contract, the 25 alphas, um, they're gonna get 24 hours of cloud, 24 hours of data, and eight hours of zero trust within, with, within SCCC. Um, and as you can see within the box, I highlighted some of the learning objectives that were produced for them um, as this curriculum gets built and we continue to move forward with the contract to empower and enable data-driven, data centricity and data-driven decision-making across the Signal Corps. Um, some few, 
a few key takeaways within the cloud is truly getting after um, cloud technology, right? Um, every cloud vendor and provider provides us something a little different. So not just focusing on, on that piece, is not, it's not just AWS, but they're gonna get a little bit of Azure, a little bit of Google, so that they, they know holistically what the right answer is and the right solution is for their organization and their boss. Um, and within the data, um, getting after big data, right? So they understand what their technicians are doing and how to, how to empower them and drive that visualization and reporting. So next is gonna be the 255 Alpha. They're, they're the other key piece into our data engineering and enabling a, a data-centric army as they're tied in with the 26 Bravos going forward. Um, they're gonna get, within their, their basic course, they're gonna get 24 hours of cloud, 32 hours of data, and 40 hours of zero trust. Um, I, I labeled it on, within the box. You can see what's for Wobic and what's for WOAC and some of those TLOs. Um, but a big one, right, is identifying and describing the different products of Microsoft Power Platforms. So again, utilizing and empowering the tools that they have at their fingertips so that they can drive change now and not wait on, on, on some of these um, things to be approved and or assessed within their organizations. Next, we're gonna highlight the 255 Novembers. Um, They'll get clouded data in Wobic, and they will get zero trust in WOAC. And this kind of shows, you know, empowering them to, to be that partner. Um, they may not be in the, in the true data fight, you know, up front, but realizing that they provide a big backhaul and, and providing the, the bandwidth and the throughput, ensuring that they understand what the 255 Alpha and the 26 Bravo is doing is very imperative and important. And, and so just kind of seeing, um, they have a lot of TLOs that they took away and they have some good things in there, like applying data orchestration to a data-centric network. I think that's very important. Um, you know, orchestration is gonna be huge as we continue to get into the data sphere and continue to enable and empower holistically across the Army. So start data tagging and putting data in buckets so that we can call on the data quickly and utilize it to make those decisions. Uh, this is gonna be the 255 Sierras. Um, they they uh, have a very wide base within their organization um, just because of what they do um, and, and you know packets are considered data so empowering and enabling them through this contract to ensure um, they're also getting a lot of programming and scripting so that they can make build calls to allow them to assess packets quickly and, and truly more efficiently. So this is the, the talent management data personas. There's 11 personas across the Army. Um, and like I highlighted earlier from Dr. Markowitz, everybody plays a role in this room, um, whether you're a green suitor or not, in, industry partner, friend, um, ensuring that we all in, enable and empower each other to get after data centricity. But as you can see at that lower level where we kind of place the 25 alpha, they're gonna be the tactical data manager, right? They're gonna be the ones that's leading their S6 shops that are they're in the G6s. They're ground and pounding but they're on the front end fighting for their soldiers, being the FaceTime to the boss. Um, the, 25, the 255 Alpha, they're more the descriptive analyst slash inside analyst with the, a flavor of engineering. Um, we are gonna empower them to become engineers, but, and you can see that, that, uh, that yellow circle as they move up into advanced analysts, and that's kind of through training and progression. And the same thing for the 26 Bravo, going from a data engineer to a data architect through time and experience. Um, they're kind of the unique case, and the reason why we, we onboarded them so heavy is they don't come back to the signal, to Fort Gordon, right? We have a one-time training. So at 300 hours plus experience is what we're gonna use to utilize and expand them to get up to that, that data architect. Um, and so within that, I have just a, a quick conclusion for you guys. In conclusion, data literacy is not just a buzzword. It's very important and it's the, the future of the Army. It is a critical capability that can transform the way we fight as an Army. Embracing data literacy will lead to more effective decision making, improved operational efficiencies, and will enhance critical thinking and problem solving. By prioritizing data literacy and in providing the necessary training and resources, we can create a force that is well equipped to meet the challenges of the next fight. We will need to continue to upskill and educate our soldiers and become data literate and empowering data-driven decisions. 
continue to vocalize and enhance leadership buy-in and the power of data to help drive away the challenges and inherit the values of becoming a data-centric army. The Signal School, with the vision of the Chief of Signal, see the value of creating a data literate Signal Corps and are always looking for ways to better educate and upskill Signal soldiers to provide the tools they need to be successful today. We are very excited to see how these upcoming courses prepare the sig Signal leaders. Um, thank you guys so much for your time, and I'm now I'm open for any questions. Sir. Testing. Yeah, it sounds like it. So uh, I think one of the big challenges that uh, we have as we bring more people into the community as uh, data uh, liter literate folks, um, how do we help them to make better value judgments for the data that they're responsible for? So like, how do I help a stakeholder understand that, hey, this is authoritative data that needs to be made available to the enterprise so that decision leaders across Echelon can utilize it to make more effective decisions? So I think that's a two-fold question, sir. So knowledge sharing, first and foremost, right? Um, we're, we're all used to protecting, hey, this is my data. But again, if it's authoritative data source, that drives to the Army needs to empower leaders and empower organizations to utilize that data to make those decisions. Um, and to the second part of, of your question, sir, it starts with in training, right? We need leaders and soldiers to understand and, and test and train using that data so they can understand what, what's good about that data, dirty data in, dirty data out, right? But more so, have them buy into that data. Let that data tell those stories, and when they're successful, that's just going to continue to drive. People are going to want that data more and more, sir, from my perspective. Yes, sir. Trinidad Capello, U.S. Army Forces Command, G6 office. Uh, just want to be clear, you mentioned civilians when you were talking about the training. So the training that you're having at Gordon here, uh, is that open to civilians as well? For signals, 2210s is, is right now holistically, sir. Okay, yeah, that's, that's what I was looking for, because quite frankly, and uh, I don't know if anybody from SARA or digital technology career field is in here, but they're doing a piss poor job of educating civilians and data. So it's great to see, you know, great presentation, and uh, it's great to see the Signal School doing it, and then offering it to our 2210s, uh, because just because they're trained in cyber doesn't mean they're trained in data, and you, and you know that. And so it's great to see that, and we'll try to get some folks down here uh, to the school. Second thing, while I'm at it, the only thing you know, the business mission area uh, is pushing the enterprise data service catalog. Yes, sir. And that's something I think you ought to consider incorporating into the training because once it's decided what is authoritative data, then, I mean, because Forcecom's already getting taskings to put, identify data and put it into the data service catalog that's built yes, by the business mission area, Mr. Swan and those guys. And I think at some point we've got to, uh, tell our data folks that, you know, wherever when you identify that data, that's where it needs to go, and they need to know how to do it because uh, uh, they're trying to tie that to Army portfolio management system as well to track all the IT expenditures. So I think that's one thing we ought to also consider in the training, probably for this at the senior leader level. Yes, sir. Uh, but at some point we got to get to that as well. Thanks. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other question, sir? Yes, sir. So, so luckily, um, CAC is in is in the process of that. So they they're very aggressive. They're saying by F by June of of FY twenty four, data literacy will be baked into every course across the Army when it comes to PME. So at least building a foundational approach, and then from there, every center of excellence will be sprinkling their um, their flavor, you know, for us, Signal Orange, and, and empowering through data centricity. But um, from from ARL, I think it will come from that perspective, sir. Any other questions? 
Sir. Yes, sir. So from the signal school, from our perspective, is definitely enabling the warfighter and then from there enabling their commanders. But the warfighter on, for LISCO is going to be the maneuver, you know, at, at echelon, ensuring that the warfighter has what they need to be successful because um, they're the ones that are in harm's way, sir. Did that answer your question? And it's twofold, right? And, and so when you have your staff, they're going to be more so inclined to enable the commander. But the actual data-driven technologists that are going to be at the lower levels and, and working side-by-side -side with the warfighting functions, their main goal is going to be to enable those those subordinate commanders to, to call for fire or to know where the enemy is or to have the right supply chain so they have the right missiles and the right tools at the right time when, as they're traveling because they're always going to be on the move. Yeah, and I think that's going to be more, as we move to a more cloud-centric environment, I think those apps or those tools that are available within the cloud providers are going to solve a lot of those problems from my, from my experience and my perspective working within, within the cloud environment, sir. Um, because it, we can only go with what's approved and what's baked into those, those IL 4 and 5 environments within the GovCloud. Um, so that's a huge limiting factor and in, in knowing what tools are available. Again, but always looking for new tools that we can empower and, and educate soldiers on. Um, so if there is something that's, that's useful for these soldiers, I'm always willing to talk to you and see what we can do to, to provide it to soldiers. I think it's just finding the right stakeholder within the DOD, sir, that can, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of, I mean, Kenny Grant over here, he's, he's been helping a lot of org.
Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm working at Cybercom, the information operation community, or the OIE community is experiencing the same type of problem. So I'm glad that you spoke about hearing this other patterns of excellence. But could, could you give us a rough idea about how Yes, ma'am. So, so what, from the ATARs, the two-week course perspective, the true baseline of an engineer. So we're going to do three in FY24, four in 24, four in 25, and four in 26, 20 students per course. That's from uh, ATARs slash I want to register perspective. When it comes to PME perspective, at, by the end of 24, every single 255 Alpha and 26 Bravo course will leave being designated as an engineer from their perspective. Okay. Signal um, branch, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All right, that concludes my presentation. Thank you guys so much for attending.